Hi, I'm Paul Wynn. Welcome to Head On, a show about interesting events and activities that take place in Nanaimo and on Vancouver Island. And today we have a very special treat for you about the music world. And with me is an international recording artist, David Gogo, and a newcomer, Susan Barnes. Welcome to Head On. Thank you. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning about the music. And uh, as I say, David, you've been in the industry for a while and you've got an international following and reputation. I don't want to be tied down but I hate to be alone Too many people buzz me on my telephone I want to hit the highway but I just can stay at home The pain you bring me cuts me to the bone What did it take to get there? Well, things are sure a lot different these days. Uh, when I first started out, it was strange. I was just into playing music, and especially playing it live. I started playing here in Nanaimo um, when I was about 16 years old. And just, you know, every time that, that we'd start doing really well in Nanaimo, my parents would encourage, encourage me and my dad would say, well, you, you're doing good in town, maybe you should try Victoria. So we'd try Victoria, do well there, and well, you did well there, maybe try Vancouver. So I wasn't really that interested in recording when I first got into it, but the live show got so popular that we started to get courted by different record labels, and next thing you know, I was uh, signed to a record deal, which um, I had no idea what I was getting into there. <laughs> but um, I, it, was just, it was just my love of music, my love of playing live that really got me started. Did you have to have an agent? Um, that's a very good question. I, I certainly didn't at the beginning, and then that began uh, a whole other uh, kind of crazy journey. Um, but, you know, the first guy I worked with as, a, as an agent slash manager was a guy named Frank Wipert, who's still in the business. And Frank was very good because he was very much into the artist and very much about the music. And um, he was the first guy that got us out and playing road trips, like going out in the prairies. And, it, and in those days, um, this would be like the late 80s, um, especially a blues band, you could play anywhere from four to six nights a week on the road. So you go to Calgary, there'd be a blues club that would take you for five nights a week. Then you go on to Saskatoon. So that was kind of, I equate it to those of our, our Beatles in Hamburg days, where you just you played four sets, four sets a night for five, six nights a week, and really learned our craft. Well, that's good. Uh, now, Susan, you, you're new, basically, to the industry. Pretty much, yeah. How are you finding it? Well, actually the same as David. I do it because I'm very passionate about it. I love. I've been basically singing since I was a kid. My parents saw that love and passion interest. They bought my first guitar when I was 15. I was kind of a little bit lazy with my guitar playing, but I did pick up by ear. But uh, I was mainly into the singing. Then uh, when I got a little bit more serious, I got involved with the BC Songwriters back about 20 years ago or something, and started getting originals from other writers. And then uh, in chorus, I ended up finding out that I could that I was writing songs, so that's when that started to kind of translate and I started writing my own songs and then we moved to the island. Okay. Been a little busy settling in here and I'm trying to get back into it. Do you, do you have, have you, do what David was doing, do you go to clubs or? I haven't, not recently. Um, my family and I located over here and started our family so I got a little busy with my kids. And, but before that, I was actually doing open mics. And yeah, maybe some clubs, but not with a band. I hadn't really found a band, per se. But I basically just got out and started doing my thing, got a few recommendations from some people to start doing open mics, looking for original material. And then I started writing my own songs. So kind of not there yet. Yeah. No, as, as David points out, it, take, it takes time. And, uh, yes. and you know, I, I was interested in, in your, your newest uh, your release, David. Is, uh, maybe you could tell us a bit about that. Well, this is album number 14, and um, I feel it's my strongest effort. And when you were talking about the originals, that's the most important thing. And being a blues guy, when I first started, I just loved playing all the old blues classics. And there were so many 
to choose from. And, and a lot of the people that we played for w had no idea who Albert Collins was mm -hmm. or all, you know, Albert King or whatever. So it was fun playing those songs. But then I realized that I, you know, I kind of want to do my own thing. And just on a strictly monet monetary uh, level, I mean, that's where the money is too. Yes. Um, but but I'm, I've been pretty proud of the songwriting. I mean, I, I've managed to not only just get airplay with community stations and blues stations and specialty stations, but we've crossed over into mainstream uh, commercial rock radio several times. Um, there was a TV show that used one of my songs as a, a co-write that I did as a, a theme song for their show on the Discovery Channel. Um, like we mentioned during the, when we were getting set up, the Buddy Guy, yeah. the legendary Buddy Guy recorded a song that I co-wrote. So that that's nice. And when, when I'm getting ready to play a show and I write out the set list and I look and say 80% of the material songs that I wrote or co-wrote, it's a really good feeling. Yeah, I would bet because it's... It it's, it's, you know, I don't think uh, just repeating somebody else's material, you know, I mean, that's kind of nice because sometimes people like to hear those things. Mm -hmm. But I think when you can uh, finally get your own sound and your own style entrenched and people following you for, you know, the originality, that's kind of cool. See, that's what you have to look forward to, I think, Susan, <laughs> is uh, yeah. that, that originality, getting followers who, who are going to want to hear your original stuff as opposed to just something that other people have written and you're just singing. What's cool for me is when I started doing my own material and then you get out there and when you get up on stage or whatever, the fact when people respond so well and they like what you do, to me it's like it's giving me permission to really get out there and do what I love to do. And, uh, and also when you do your own songs, I find, I don't know if you found this, but I do other people's songs and I do it, you know, I do it well, but when you do your own songs, you have more passion. You seem to be more passionate about it. And uh, some of the feedback I've gotten is some of my peers back at uh, BC Songwriters found that I did them a little bit better, probably because I had a little bit more passion in them. Yeah. Well, that makes sense to, to me. I mean, I, you know, you got to take pride in your own, your own work. I mean, yes. uh, it's... That's why you, you do it. I, I've, I've not, not ever been a musician. I, I, I was telling you, um, my dad was a musician. He, he was a trumpet player. And, uh, and I inherited his trumpet. And I just thought, well, I just got to pick it up. And of course, the way my dad used to sound, I just had to blow in it and it would be, <laughs> didn't, work that, didn't work that way. Yeah. It was strange how that yeah. happens, you know. We, I, you know, like a, a, I get a small, sense of what it takes to dedication you have to put into and the time you have to put into yeah. try and make it your, your life a success. But, but I, I can't imagine that the music industry is an easy industry to, to survive in and get into. I really don't. It's very difficult, um, it's, and, and it's been more and more difficult over the years um, with the illegal downloading, and you know, people can basically yes. take their music if, if they want. They can just take it. They can find it any, almost anywhere. I'm lucky that the kind of music I play, people tend to be your true fans. And I've even had people come up to me at shows, and they said, you know, I couldn't find your album anywhere, so I downloaded it. But now you're here in town, so I'm going to buy the CD, even though they already had it. So it means it's a different kind of fan that way, and the music isn't as disposable. But you know, something like this, the, my latest album, doing the vinyl press. I mean, it's, that's like a real souvenir. So if you go out there and you're on tour, and people get that, and you come and meet them and shake their hand and, and autograph it, it makes it easier. One thing that I've done in the last probably started about 10 years ago, because Canada is such a huge country, most of my touring is is in Canada. I go to Europe twice a year, but I have one band here in Nanaimo another band in Ottawa, oh. and then another band in Holland. But they're not just fill-in guys. They're not just subs. Like, they're, they're real dudes that have played with me for a long time. Uh -huh. They know the tune. So as long as I give them enough warning, you know, say, okay, you know, coming up in, in June, I'm going to need this band, and then in the end of July, I'm going to need that band, they're, they're with me. And that's the only way it makes it feasible. So that way I'm just paying for one plane ticket, fly out east, do a bunch of shows in that circuit. And on days off, those guys can all go home. Right. and do their grown-up jobs or whatever they want to do, and then it's, I just have to pay for me. To try to keep a whole band together would just be impossible. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Well, you, well you're, you're basically a solo, aren't you? Right now I am, yes. Yeah. And that, um, well, that's a good hint is what you, yeah. you might be up against. Uh, you say, well, better to have 
uh, people you can hook up with in a, another city rather than ha a, have everybody travel with you. Because that's a neat that, concept. It, it's, it's not like the old days when big bands used to travel from one end of the country to the other. With the tour bus. And yeah, everything. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I, and, and probably not, wasn't probably a great deal, uh, like lifestyle, it wasn't probably that great living on the back of a bus and sort of going on. But, I, but otherwise, um, I know I was interested, Susan, in what, what uh, do you have a plan for yourself at this point? Do you have where you're, you're, you'd like to go from this point of your career? Um, basically, like you said, where the money is, is in songwriting. I started writing songs. I want to get some more tunes written. I want to be able to put enough to get an album together. I haven't thought about the tour aspect yet, so I kind of want to start. I've built my website. Uh, I'm trying to get my marketing material up, get my practicing in, writing more songs, get enough material to get an album out, which is my first goal. And then, you know, like I said, right now I just kind of grab my guitar and I kind of do my own uh, backup right now, but. You know, it's a matter of hooking up with the right people and, and maybe try to reach some radio stations. Well, that, that's because you, you had um, uh, a song, a single that you did, um, you know, was it Walk, Walk, Walk? Yes. And, and that's, a, that's a neat song that, you, you know, you, you played for us. And uh, so I'm hoping that uh, when the audience hears it, they'll, they'll get a, maybe a good taste for your music and yeah. just start following.
the door, baby. Walk, walk back out the door. Walk, walk out the door, baby. Walk, walk. I was gonna, I was gonna ask uh, you, David, about um, is when you uh, write a, an original piece of music. Um, how do you how do you market it? I mean, like you say, if you don't want to do it yourself and you 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 want to send it out there, see if somebody else might pick it up. Yeah, well, I'm lucky that I'm with a, a record company out of Victoria called Cordova Bay Entertainment, and um, we have a separate like they're they're very much um, into the publishing of, of the songs. So we have um, the staff down there. They kind of they, they, that's their job. They do it so that they can put the songs out there, whether it's for a film soundtrack or an advertisement or, or other artists. So it's a lot easier these days just to go to people's websites and then you ask them, are you, would you be interested? You can do everything electronically now, which is good. Yeah. But um, yeah, the original thing's the way to go, and you can never have too much material. I know that, <laughs> but you know, and it helps. Like like with the new album, um, the title track Vicksburg Call got. Uh, uh, 100.3, the Q in Victoria decided to start playing that song, and I played Victoria a couple of weeks ago, and it's probably the biggest crowd I've ever had at a show of mine. And it just shows because six months ago we played a show there, and we did well, mm -hmm. but this time it was overflowing, you know. And that just shows that just one song on the radio can help that much. Mm -hmm. Plus, the album got nominated for Juno, and that yes. you know that you sprinkle that Juno dust wherever you can, sure. you know. So yeah, it, it's but you got to in this business you always have to keep thinking at least six months ahead, if not a year ahead too, because you you got to think about the festivals and the festivals are booking earlier and earlier every year. Um, you know, I'm getting offers for 2017 right now. Wow. You know. Yeah. So hopefully I'm still around. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well they've got some. I mean, I've I've been to a few of the festivals and you're right, like the crowds. People like the outdoor venue in that, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and I, I was uh, the one. One of them that I liked was the Burnaby Blues Festival yep. because they have usually they have about three stages, which is very nice for the the audience because you know you you never you you, you don't ever have a break if if you don't want one. There's always somebody playing, and you know and that that's kind of nice. But yeah. but you also attract a, a lot of top name. Yeah, artists. and that's a, that's a great festival, Burnaby. I, I've been lucky to play there a couple times over the years. Last time was about two years ago, and uh, not only is it great for the audience, but backstage, it's 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 amazing. Like the, they've got great food. The the equipment, like you can just show up. You don't have to bring your drums and keyboards wow. and amps. And they've got the best equipment that money can rent, right. <laughs> I guess. And uh, they always have a great lineup. And I'm lucky this year. I'm already booking into October. Uh, I'll be involved with the Salmon Arm Roots and Blues. Montreal Jazz Fest, Ottawa Blues Fest, Thunder Bay Blues Fest, another one outside of Quebec, like just tons, and even Nanaimo Blues Fest at the end of August. So there's only so many weekends in the summer, but I know, right? I'm glomming onto a lot of them. <laughs> but but the, I mean, th that's fun. It's, it's like that's the hot season, and um, the, the shows are just bigger and better. And like you say, it's hopefully you get the good weather and people are out there having a great time. And, uh, and I always enjoy going out. And, and seeing other bands too. That's a chance for a musician to go and you know check out the competition. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. have, have you done any festivals at all? I did one back, I think it was late 90s, okay. and it was a brand new festival they tried to start in Asoyas, and it okay. didn't pan out. So it was kind of a small, it wasn't a good attendance, but it still gave me the feel of performing with other musicians and everything, and met some neat people that. Because it must be a local festival, because you know, like you, I'm a relative newcomer to Nanaimo. The Nanaimo, yes. as you were mentioning, has a, a festival. What, what time of year is it? Their Blues Festival is the last weekend of August, and August. it's really grown over the last couple of years. And they've got some some just amazing headliners. They did last year, and they do this year as well. Like real big name artists that you'd see in, in any festival headlining in the U.S. or, or Europe. Yeah, and but they always include some locals as well. Sure. So is that, would that be something that you would be interested in trying to play in? For sure. And then there's also the one in Duncan, too, the Sunfest. Yeah, That's Sunfest it. was more country-oriented. And then they've got the Cowich and Folk Festival, which gets okay. all sorts of blues and folk and everything. So there's some great festivals mm -hmm. all on the island, yeah. Oh, I'm doing one, uh, I don't know, we're not supposed to announce it yet, but uh, this big blues bash uh, down in Victoria uh, in September. So there, there's lots of good festivals on the island. Nice. You know, the one thing that I, I've found is, uh, you know, country music has, has changed so much to me. Like, I mean, it, you know, it used to have a, if I can dare say it, they used to have a very distinct sound. Mm -hmm. Now. You know, like I hear a song, and, well, maybe it is. You, you look at the artist, so-called country and yeah. Western artist. 
the music has it, changed. Yeah, it's 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 very watered down and it's very generic yes. and um, mm. overproduced. And <laughs> but people, I don't know. Some people seem to like it's not my cup of tea. Well, maybe maybe they found the market was slipping. I don't know. You know but, uh, yeah, I I I, uh, <laughs> I stopped trying to figure out all that stuff a long time well, ago. <laughs> well, you know, it's I, I can remember driving across Canada from Vancouver to Halifax. And, uh, you know, trying to get music on your car radio, 99% of the time I got country music, couldn't find anything, but I could always pick up a country <laughs> music station. It seemed strange that it was, you know, I don't know if it's still the same now. This is about 15 years ago. Well, the traditional country, what they call traditional country, now they kind of label as um, roots or Americana, you right. know, and that's what you hear. And what, and what they call country is more like, heavy metal with banjos on it, like oh, heavy metal light with banjos, and all these guys with their freak accents, and okay. you know, it's just, yeah. oh, it's brutal, yeah. So, yeah. Who am I to yeah. No, well, listen, it's not, <laughs> crit it's not like, criticizing, right? it's just making a comment, yeah. you know? Yeah. Everybody can have an opinion, you know, yeah. that's yeah. cool. That's, that's not true. A, yeah, but it, it's, uh, but, I, but I, I'm looking forward to you launching and, you know, well, uh, you. hearing more and more about your, your music. Uh, getting airplay and you know, yes. seeing your name on concert charts, you know, and <laughs> uh, things. That'll be kind of cool. I, I know, as I say, I, 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 I kind of envy you guys who have a talent to make music. I, I don't, uh, the only thing I play is the radio, my, you know, my, <laughs> my record player yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. I, I, as I mentioned, I tried my dad's trumpet, but it, it just wouldn't cooperate with me. <laughs> well, the biggest thing these days, too, is, is you asked me earlier if I had an agent. And at this point, I don't even really have one. I have one in, in Europe and I have one in Quebec because those are different markets that I don't have a lot of knowledge of. Um, but for 80 to 90 percent of the shows I do, I, I do myself, which 10, 15 years ago was a lot more difficult. Nowadays with social media, it's amazing. Yeah. If you're proactive with social media, like my Facebook page is, is huge for me, and I'm on there every day, and, and I run it. I don't hire someone to, to, to do, right. the, do the posts like I do it. And as I travel, I'm not always just trying to cram information out people's throat, like, buy my album, come to my show. I'll say, hey, here I am in Edmonton at this guitar shop. Look at this great guitar I saw. You know, it's a 1954 Les Paul or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then that gets all the guitar guys on. Mm -hmm. And then a little while later, I'll go, hey, I went to this amazing um, Cajun restaurant. You know, have a little picture of the food, and then you get all the foodies on there. So <laughs> it, it, after a while, you find that people start to live vicariously through the Facebook page as you're touring. And I've tried to add Twitter to that as well. So that's really helped. I really believe that the social media has very much helped me um, get as they say in the business, get bums in seats at the shows, yeah. mm -hmm. but just create more of a following. Okay. And that's something you couldn't do 15 years ago. Yeah. Well, they see, I think from what you just said to me is that I, I think people begin to see you as, as a person, you know, like, I mean, other than just the musician, you're a guy that appreciates, oh, good food, uh, oh, look yeah. at that. here's a nice musical instrument. And I think that that's kind of important. They, they, don't, uh, they don't see you as sort of separate from any life they might have personally because yeah. you're a superstar, uh, you know, performing. And that, I think that uh, makes a big difference. The, um, the time, you know, is, is, you're right, it's just social media has made everything so much different. Yeah, it makes the audience feel part of it, and they are part of it. They're a huge part of it, you know? So you, and then after a while, you get people saying, hey, you know what? I, I see you're playing at Edmonton. Well, you should maybe try this place in Lloyd Minster, and they'll even suggest gigs, you know, or wow. come up with gigs, which is fantastic. Yeah, like I, I um, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see this this vinyl that you've got um, because I uh, I had a whole stack of vinyl that's been sitting, and um, it was just, you know, it was just sort of. Um, Nothing. I couldn't. I wasn't playing it, and then suddenly I got my I don't know, turntable set up again, and I've been playing it, and I'm really impressed with the sound. You know. Yeah. Well, this is the first time in 14 albums that I've, that I've had vinyl, and I was very excited when my first album was about to come out in the early 90s, and a month before they released the album, they decided to not press vinyl anymore. They said, that's it, vinyl's dead, it's just gonna be CDs and cassettes. So it took me a long time, and I, I'm really, really pleased. It was, it was so cool, I, I, I whipped down to Victoria the other day to grab the first box of these, and you know, I was holding it in my hand so proud. But then it occurred to me, with all the traveling I do, I'm not really looking forward to transporting these because if I fly to Europe, I can cram 100 CDs in my guitar case sure. and my suitcase and wherever, you know, put them in my carry-on. These, uh, these suckers are a little, 
little uh, bulkier and uh, a lot more fragile. So, oh, and they weigh a lot. They do. Surprisingly, they're heavy, yeah. just to have together. your own suitcase for it. <laughs> well, you, yeah, I'll have to like that's going to be a logistical nightmare this summer with all yeah. the festivals trying to make sure we have them because people love it. I mean, I've only played one show so far. We've had the vinyl available, and we sold more vinyl than we did CDs. For the, you know, and, and so I was pleasantly surprised. But um, yeah, it's it's a cool, it's a cool thing, and I, I actually listened to it for the first time today at home. And the whole side A and side B concept, that's another thing that we've lost with albums wow. these days. That's and right. I think that's why people lose interest in albums as albums. They're just listening to focus tracks and whatever like the song is on the radio, or they just might buy the single off of iTunes. This way, you're, 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 you're getting back into the whole album. Like, oh, that first side of the album is so great, and then you flip it over, and oh, the second side's a little more mellow or whatever, and it's, it's cool. But of course, with the vinyl, we include a, a digital download. So if you do want to put it on your phone or your Very iPad smart. or whatever, you can oh, do that. Yeah. That's, that's, smart. that's smart, too. Then, you, yeah. like you were saying, people, when you're driving in your car or something, you can listen to it or yeah. just, yeah. No, I, I find that. Um, that, that was with me, with mine. I, there's certain cuts on an al album that I like, and I'll, but I'll, yeah. I'll listen to the whole side, you know, and then I'll, like, and there's some, like you point out, on one side and the other side. Like, I, I was, today I was looking at the paper, and I, I was thinking that uh, Billy Paul, who was an yeah. old, passed away. And uh, me and Mrs. Jones, I mean, I must have sung that song yeah. to the rafters. I mean, <laughs> I know he wrote other songs, but, but it's that kind, but I have it on. I have it on vinyl, yeah. and I dug out my old vinyl this morning, and I, I'll, I'll play it again today. It's so great to listen to it like that, yeah. yeah. Well, we're coming to an end, guys. I, I wow. guess it seems like phew, time has just uh, sped up, but before I, before I depart, I, I, I want to thank you very much. It's been a big pleasure for me to you know, meet you both and uh, have a chance to talk to you. And I'm going to invite the audience if you have any ideas that you think we might like to, uh, or you might like to see on Head On, drop us a line. Send it to Melissa Hall. You'll see her email address on the bottom of the screen. And we'll be glad to look at it because we're looking for good ideas and we, ideas that we think the population in Nanaimo would like to see. Thanks for viewing and uh, look forward to seeing you again.